everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name's Romy and thank you for joining me. So I was thinking of what kind of video I could do next um, and I haven't got any finished projects to show so I thought I would just do a sewing catch up because I've got a lot of little things that I wanted to talk about. Um, but first things first, first things first, first things first, good start. Um, I want to say thank you to everyone who's watched my previous video it's got over 2,000 views, which is crazy to me. Um, you know, thank you to everyone who's watched and subscribed and commented and shared a video. A few people mentioned it on their channels, so it's just so lovely. I mean, I just started doing videos again because I wanted to have other like-minded people to chat with and share my sewing adventures with. And, you know, I'd be happy if 20 people watched it and enjoyed it, but to have over 2,000 views is crazy. So thank you again, and I hope you all stick around and enjoy staying here for whatever videos I put out next. So yeah, please keep subscribing if you would like to keep in touch with me. Feel free to comment anything that resonates with you in the comments below, and I'll, I'll try and get through all of them and, and reply and give them all a like. So first thing first, thank you for watching. So I have a little list here because there's no way I'm going to remember everything. Um, if I sound a bit snuffly, I've got a bit of a cold. It's either a cold or hay fever. Um, so apologies for that. Um, so yeah, uh, what have I been up to? Um, last weekend, so this is Easter weekend. I'm doing this on Monday. Um, back to work tomorrow, but it's nice to have a day off. Last weekend, I was in Seville in Spain. I went with a couple of friends just for a weekend, just for a nice little girls trip and had a really nice time. I've been to Seville before a few years ago but I didn't remember much about it um, so I was really excited to go again and it was lovely. The weather was really warm, it was a bit cloudy but that's fine because I burn really easily so I was happy to um, get some warmth on my skin and wear some shorts and t-shirts so that was really nice. I didn't take anything me made that I can think of. Um, my summer wardrobe, because my style has changed a bit and my size, um, a lot of my me made dresses from a few years ago aren't really what I want to wear anymore. So I do want to look at that as we go into summer, but I was just, I was traveling with just a backpack. So I just took shorts and t-shirts and I was really comfortable. So that was fine. But I did do some fabric shopping, just, just a tiny bit. I didn't look up any fabric shops deliberately because I was with my friends, I didn't want to drag them around fabric shops, but I happened to stumble across one, which is handy. Uh, it was closed when we saw it, but there was a piece of fabric in the window that I really liked. So I made a note of it, went back the next day, and uh, it was a really cool shop, actually. It just sold lots of remnants from what I could tell. They had a lot of, they did have some bolts of fabric, but there were just tables with lots of cuts of fabric that were maybe one meter, two meters, um, and priced individually and lots of different types. It's definitely the kind of shop where if I lived locally, I would pop in every month or so just to see what there was because I get the feeling she must get a lot of turnover. Um, but the fabric I, that caught my eye was in the window uh, and it's this one. I just really loved the pattern of it. It was sort of hanging draped in the window like this. And as we walked past, I was like, yeah, I want that. Um, so I went in and it feels, she told me it was a cotton, but it's quite a drapey cotton. It, I would almost believe it's like, um, it feels a bit like a linen viscose. So maybe it has some viscose content in there. Maybe it's just the weave. I don't really know. Um, but yeah, it's really nice. feels nice and soft and breathable, floaty. And there is, uh, 1.2 meters here and it's 160 centimeters wide. So quite a decent piece. And I got this for 10 euros. Um, there was only one piece there, so this is all I could buy. Um, maybe she gets them dead stock. I don't know where she gets them from. But um, so I got this and got to stand in the queue listening to some Spanish ladies chatting about fabric, which I always enjoy. Uh, I do speak Spanish, so I was listening to what they were saying. Um, and I was happy to have picked up something to remember my trip from to Seville and satisfy my fabric shopping cravings. Um, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it. I have a crazy notion that I might be able to squeeze a Zadi play suit out of it. So the Zadi jumpsuit is a pattern I've made a couple of times before and would really like to make again this summer. 
um, both the long version and the short version. Um, and I need to do some twirling on it because my previous versions from a couple of years ago are too big for me. They were too big anyway when I made them and now I've lost a bit of weight. So, and also the crotch length. I think a lot of people have had issues with that. It was quite long. So I'd like to try it again. And I know I've only got 1.2 meters, but it seems like a big piece. And if I'm really careful with how I Tetris the pieces together, I feel like I might manage it. Um, I would probably have to use different bias binding um, and maybe just a plain fabric for the ties. I'm not sure. When I make the Zadie as well, I know on the pattern you have the bias binding so you can see it on the outside, but I prefer to turn it all the way to the inside. I just find that easier. So if I do that, I can use just a plain black bias binding um, and that will cut down on how much fabric I need. So. You know, I'm ever optimistic that I can get any pattern out of less than two meters of fabric. That's just a toxic trait of mine. Um, so we'll see and I'll let you know how that goes. But if I can't get it out, then maybe just um, a pair of shorts, something like that, I think would be really nice or a skirt for summer because uh, it's really floaty and I think it would be really nice in the hot weather. So I was very pleased with that. The day before I went to an antiques fair with a couple of friends. I have a, my best friend is and obsessed with antique shopping so we sometimes go to the fairs together and I always like keeping an eye out on sewing things so sewing memorabilia and what do you call it memorabilia I don't know sewing bits and bobs um trinkets and things um and there were a few I'll pop a picture in there was this really cute kind of thread holder um it was 140 pounds so I didn't go for it but it, it looked like a little carousel and you kind of pop your bobbin spools on it I thought it was adorable um and then I really one thing I was keeping my eye out for is a bobbit not bobbin a darning mushroom I do darn occasionally uh, I like to try and repair holes in my socks or in cardigans and things so I wanted a darning mushroom and I found one inside a kind of wicker sewing chest thing um and i'll show you it's this one um and i asked her if i could buy this and she was selling the whole sewing box as a job lot um and i didn't i wasn't especially on the lookout for a sewing box because i i don't have room for it really but it was so unusual and cute um and she only wanted 25 pounds for the whole thing so i bought it i was enabled by my friends they did talk me into it um, you're actually resting on it at the moment. It's a good camera stand, so I'll pop a picture in. Um, but yeah, she said it was 1930s. I don't know if it's maybe a bit older because it doesn't seem that old, but it's really cute. It's got a little lift up um, handle and inside there is a lot of different threads and uh, tools, some darning thread. I probably won't use the sewing thread because if it's really old, it won't be very good quality or it will have degraded, but I'm interested to, I haven't really looked through it yet to see what I've got, but um, I just think this, I thought of this stand as a really nice like project keeper. So if I'm working on a little hand sewn project or um, occasionally I do knit or crochet, I could keep it in there. Um, I don't know where I'm gonna put it. I'm gonna put it in my bedroom or keep it. This is the dining room. This is my sewing space. Um, we'll see if my mum lets me keep it here because her style is a lot different to mine. She's more modern and I'm a little more vintage. So I got those and was very pleased with those. And then I just picked up a couple of other things. So when I go to any antique fair or vintage sale, I love to get buttons because you get a lot more for your money than if you go to like Hobbycraft or somewhere. Um, and they're often quite unusual. So I got these green buttons. Um, they're like a pearly light green um, and how many are there? 12, so that's a good number. Um, and I have some green fabric. I talked about it last video actually. If I end up keeping it, um, I might need some buttons to go with it. There's also a green floral viscose in John Lewis that I really like, but it's 12 pounds a metre and I don't need it right now. So maybe I'll get that at some point during the summer, we'll see. But I don't really have any green buttons, so I thought this would be a good thing to get. And they were two pounds, so two pound for 12 buttons. That's really good. Um, and then I also found a stall selling remnants or scraps of fabric. 
And again, I have so many scraps of fabric I don't need anymore. Um, but these are kind of unusual and I liked them. <laughs> That's the only justification I ever need. Well, I liked them, so I bought them. This one has little clocks on and this one's just like a floral. But these are always good for making little bags or pocket linings, that kind of thing. Um, I also have an idea of making a scrappy quilt one day um, with all the different like rainbow colours. So, you know, I like to pick up things for that. Um, I really need to go through my scrap box actually. I have a massive plastic storage box, which is where I keep all my really small pieces of cotton, so fat quarter or less, and it's full. Um, but they're just so nice, I can't bring myself to get rid of any. So um, I need to do more quilting um, is what I'm getting from this. Uh, speaking of quilting, the other thing I've been working on is the baby quilt for my friend. So I have made some progress on this, it's just behind me. Um, I have quilted the two sides together. I just did straight lines along the squares. Is that upside down? No, it's that way. So it doesn't really look any different that side from last time. And then on this side, I've got the numbers arc fabric. Um, and I just quilted those together with, so instead of using batting, I do sometimes use batting, but if it's not a quilt that I think someone will use to keep warm, um, I often use these kind of, you can't really see it very well. I have a piece actually here. These really cheap quilts you get from like Ikea or B&M, places like that. It's just a fleecy, really thin blanket. Um, and I use these because they're so cheap, whereas batting is, can be quite expensive. Um, and it, it quilts really easily. It feels nice. It still feels quite squishy and soft. And I thought if they're just going to be like lying this on the floor for him to play on, um, maybe putting it over the sofa, something like that. They don't really need a proper batting and that can be tricky to quilt if it's really thick. So I just, I had one already and thought, why not? So I'm really pleased with how that's turning out. I just need to bind it now. Um, I just knocked something over. So I was thinking of binding it in this kind of navy cotton that I had. And I actually cut the strips out, but I don't know what's going on with me lately. I just can't be bothered. <laughs> oh, I used to have so much sewing stamina. I don't know if anyone else finds this. I used to be able to sew for like three or four hours at a time. Um, this is probably back before I had a full-time job. Um, or even when I did have a job, I think I used to sew for the whole weekend. But these days I just can't. Um, so I cut out the strips and even pinned them together. And then I couldn't even face sewing them together and making binding and doing all the ironing. Um, so I've decided to just buy some binding anyway, instead. And that hasn't arrived yet. So once it arrives, I will finish the quilt. But um, yeah, I've just noticed this recently that if there's too many steps involved in a project, like sticking together an A4 PDF pattern, having to trace anything, having to test any fitting. I just, it's like an obstacle to me just sewing, which is the part that I really enjoy. Um, and I'm glad I've made this realization actually, because I was wondering what was going on with me because I still want to sew. I still am motivated to create things I really like. I still want the garments, they look lovely. I still want to use all this nice fabric I have. I watch people's YouTube videos and feel really inspired, but then these little barriers just stop me. And if I've only got an hour or two at the weekend to sew when I'm not doing errands or catching up on jobs, meet, seeing friends, go to Seville, um, I don't wanna be doing all these little jobs I don't need to do. So I think from now on, when I have a project, I just need to have like a really simple path to making that thing. I can't be doing any unnecessary, awkward jobs to do with that that pattern or that project. Um, we'll see how that works for me because it's been really annoying me that I've, you know, when I do have time at the weekend, I have a day free. It's like, I just procrastinate from doing it, from sewing and 
yeah, it's been really getting me down. So, you know, I've waffled already for too long. But anyway, hopefully that resonates with somebody. So the binding will arrive, hopefully this week. I will finish the quilt, that'll be a job ticked off, and then I will be able to crack on with some other things. So what else have I been planning? Um, I talked about sewing the Norma blouse by, ooh, who's that by? Norma, ooh, I can't remember what pattern company that is. I'm terrible with pattern companies, there's so many these days. Anyway, I'll put it here, Fibre Mood. I've got the pattern right next to me. Fibre Mood Norma blouse. So I was thinking of making this anyway, but I wasn't sure if I would squeeze it in before the weather got better. Um, it's still chilly-ish at the moment, so I think it's still okay. And then I saw on Instagram, there's a new challenge happening in April, which is the hashtag so April blouse 24 challenge. Um, and I was thinking, oh, great timing. This will this will be a good good time to make the Norma. This will motivate me, hopefully. Um, and that's being hosted by Ruan from Yorkshire Sew Girl and Gabrielle, Gabriella from Cloth Edit. Ruan's only just done so frugal. I don't know how she has the time and energy to be doing another challenge, but anyway, good on her. Um, so I already had the Norma printed. I printed it at work. Um, so it was an A4 pattern that I needed to stick together. So I did that the other day and it was only when I came to cut out the pattern that I realized I must have printed it wrong. So I don't know how I did this. I think when you, with the fiber mood patterns or at least the Norma, there's two different options. There's one with a seam allowance and one without, but when I've printed it, every line is the same. So this is just a facing piece. Can you see? Every single line is the same. There's no dashed line or dotted lines. So I don't know what sizes I've printed. Um, and I can't remember because I printed it out months ago. Uh, so when I came, I measured myself. I was like, right, I'm gonna make this size. Came to trace it out and I don't know what sizes are which. So, and also I don't think I've printed every size. I think I must have unchecked certain sizes on the PDF. So I don't know if I've accidentally turned off the size layer, um, but on the pattern, there's quite a lot of sizes. It goes from a 32 to a 58 uh, euro sizes. Um, and I don't have that many sizes on here. So I was thinking, shall I print it again? But then that seems like a waste of paper. And if I get it printed A0, I have to wait for it to arrive. So I measured myself and tried to measure against the pattern and I've picked the one that seems closest. It might be a bit big, but I'd rather it be too big than too small. So I cut out a size, who knows which size, um, and it's in this fabric, which I showed you before, which is an Atelier Brunette double gauze. It's a really lovely kind of red wine color with gold embroidered spots. Um, and I had one and a half meters of this and managed to get the whole pattern out, which is great. I did have to turn one of the facing pieces sideways, but I'm sure it'll be fine. It's only a twelve, so I'm not too bothered about that. And it looks quite simple. I also don't have the instructions. I'm doing really well with this pattern. Um, I have the pattern files, but not the instruction files because you have to log on to their website to get the instructions. Who knows why? Um, and when I tried, I couldn't log in, um, but I looked and there's a sew along online for it. So I'll just watch that. And I, again, I don't think it's going to be too complicated to put together. So I'm hoping to do that. Maybe I'll get some sewing done this week at lunchtime or in the evenings. I'm going away again next weekend to Rome. I seem to be going away a lot lately, which I'm really happy about, but it's not leaving much time for sewing. So I'm going to Rome with my brother and his wife. They live in America and they're coming to visit. So I'm very excited to see them. I'm not really planning on doing any sewing related shopping while I'm there, though if I stumble across a fabric shop, it would be rude not to go in. Um, I did have a look actually. I like to look on Airbnb at their experiences because sometimes there's some good workshops or tours that you can do while you're there. And when I go on holiday or go traveling, I really like to try and do activities that are unusual or typical of the place. Um, and we're doing a cooking workshop, hopefully a pasta making workshop 
I did that before in Florence and it was brilliant. It was one of the highlights of my trip. So I really want to do that. And then I saw there's an experience for leather bag making. It's like a day long workshop. Workshop. I don't know exactly how long it is, but it's 50 euros. They teach you how to make a bag, I guess quite a small bag or maybe a purse. Um, and you learn a bit more about leather working. So I might do that. Um, I've never really worked with leather b before, so I might pick up some good tips and it's just an interesting thing to do. I mean, you know, I'm all for going to the touristy places. We're going to the Colosseum, the Vatican and all of that, but I love to, you know, meet Italians or meet people from the place. And I'm doing this now, Italians, uh, maybe practice a bit of my Italian, which is a bit rusty. Um, and just do something a bit different. So I'll let you know when I'm back if I end up doing that, but fingers crossed I do. Um, I went on a bit of a tangent there, but anyway, Italy, looking forward to that. What else have I been doing? Um, I have promised my mum a dress. She asks me every year to make her something and sometimes I get around to making one. I've made her a couple of summer dresses, just kind of simple shift dresses and she found some fabric online and asked me if she if she bought it if i could make her a dress so the fabric i bought is or she bought is it was from lamazi fabrics oh god everything's gone on the floor uh, and it's a viscose linen and it's this one so it's sort of a gray taupey kind of background or maybe beige with these lovely blue flowers. I think they're chrysanthemums. She's the gardener, not me. So I'm not, I can't remember. Or dahlias? I don't know. It did say on the pattern name, uh, on the fabric name, but I can't remember. Flowers. Um, so I have that, it needs pre-washing. And for the pattern, I had one that I had traced off a dress she already owned a couple of years ago, but I remember I still had to make tweaks to it because every time I've tried to trace off a ready-to-wear dress, it never quite works very well. I've never managed to get the darts in the right place or the right width, and it never quite works out as well as the ready-to-wear dress. But this time, yesterday, we had a big clear out of a lot of our dresses that, or summer clothes that we keep in the loft. And there was one that she really liked the fit of, but she didn't really like the fabric. Um, she didn't think the colour suited her and we've got a pile to donate so I said can I requisition this one and unpick it and make a pattern out of that and she said yeah that's fine I don't think it, I think she got it on eBay anyway so it was second hand and she sacrificed that dress so that I can unpick it and rub it off I guess or copy it to make her a new dress so this is the one I've already started unpicking it so it's in a bit of a state uh, I'm not going to unpick all the binding on the armholes because that'll just take forever. And the side seams are overlocked, so I think I'll just cut them open and then add in the seam allowance afterwards. But I've unpicked the zip on the back side. That was annoying. Um, the stitching was so small. And then on the back as well, there's a vent. And I don't think I've ever sewn a vent before, so I'll have to kind of copy this dress and work out how the vent was constructed. But I think it's a nice thing to have on a summer dress it's sort of knee length you want to be able to walk in it comfortably so um i'm going to keep unpicking this unpick the darts and probably trace it rather than copying this straight onto the new fabric because then i'll have a copy of that pattern to use again in the future if she ever wants another dress so um i'd like to do that uh i think she's going away with her friends um in may but if not, we're going to Croatia in June. So it would be lovely for it to be ready for then. And it's her birthday in June as well. So I think the beginning of June is my deadline really for this. So that gives me enough time, hopefully, to get it done. I don't think it will take long to sew at all because it's just a shift dress. It's very simple. Um, but I want to make sure I get it right and get the fit right. So I'm excited for that. And the last thing I was going to talk about was um, I showed, I don't know if it was last video or the one before, my entry for So Yellow for Endo. I made a little t-shirt as part of my charity baby clothes sewing um, and post it on Instagram. And I won a prize for So Yellow for Endo, which I was very excited about. So I won a 10 pound voucher for Lucy Lockett Fabrics, which is a shop I don't think I was aware of before. 
or at least I've never bought from them. So that's really nice. I was pleasantly surprised when I got the message um, that I'd won a prize. So I had a little look on their website and I definitely don't need any more fabric. As we've discussed, I have a stash that's too big already. So I had a look at the patterns for sale on there and thought I could put the £10 voucher towards a pattern that she sells. Um, but I'm not really sure which one to choose. So maybe you guys could give me some ideas. Um, my short list is, and I'll pop pictures here as well. Um, there's a couple of true bias patterns. So there is the true bias Danny shorts here. Um, I really like these because I love a wide leg short. I don't like shorts that cling to your legs. I've got bigger thighs, which I don't mind, but I like to have room, feel like I can move in them and sit down in them and have a bit of air, you know, around my legs rather than being in tight, tight shorts. So these look really nice. I don't have any that are similar, really. I like that they have a little bit of a flat front and the button in re instead of just being gathered all the way round. So that's one option. The next true bias pattern I quite like are the lander pants. I've seen these so many times and they always look great. Um, they're a bit more of a, a fitted trouser. Um, so I'm not sure if I... Oh, my brain's gone. <laughs> Sorry, I was just looking out the window and was like, oh, look, there's leaves on the trees, how nice. Oh, I need a cup of tea. Anyway, I'm not sure if I need another trouser pattern because I already have a couple that I'd like to do. I said a few videos ago, I want to make the Dawn jeans by he uh, Megan Nielsen, or I now have the Thea trousers by Tilly and the Buttons. So I might pass on these, even though I really like them because I don't need any more trouser patterns. Um, the other two I'm interested in are the Friday Pattern Company Saltwater Slip. This is one a lot of people have made and seem to go mad for. I know Ruan from the Yorkshire Sew Girl has made a few and loves it. And I think Tamlin from Sewn on the Tyne has also made it. It's not something I would have ever thought would be my style, but actually I can see the appeal. You know, if you're going somewhere and you want to look a little bit more dressy um, or you want to wear it over a t-shirt to look a bit more relaxed, it would be really nice in the summer. Um, and you could layer it with a cardigan if it's a bit cooler. So that's a possibility and this might be a good opportunity to try something different. So if you've made that, let me know what you think. The only thing I was a bit hesitant about that for was that my shape is very pear. So I come in a lot at the waist, but then my hips are quite wide. So I wasn't sure if a slip dress would fit me that well. But then I've seen lots of nice versions on Instagram and it seems to suit a lot of body shapes. And some people have put a tie around the waist, which I guess would help with that definition. So possibly the saltwater slip just to try something new. And then on the same vein, the other pattern I was interested in was the Tilly and the Buttons Marnie blouse, which again, this seems to have happened to a lot of people. When it came out, I wasn't really that into it. I guess it's quite fussy. It's got a lot of pin tucks and balloon sleeves and flounces and gathering. And I thought, oh, that's, I don't know if that's me at all. It's maybe a bit much, but I feel like everyone has said that and then they've made it and been obsessed with it. So again, Ruan has made it. I think all of the Northern Soul Sisters, Ruan, Rachel and Tamlin have made it um, and they all love it. And the good thing about the Marnie is you can pick and choose the different features depending on how fussy you want it to be. So from what I can gather, you can omit the pin tucks or have them. You can have pin tucks on the sleeves. You can add frills, which I don't think I would include. There's like a frill on the shoulder seam. I don't think I would do that, but I've never done pin tucks before. So maybe the Marnie would be an interesting one to try. So let me know what you think. Um, would you go for the shorts pattern, which I'm sure would be my style and would get a load of wear out of them? Maybe not the lander pants, but if you've made it and you think it's the best pattern in the world, let me know. Um, or the Marnie or the saltwater slip. Um, because I can't choose, but I'd like to use the opportunity of having the voucher to try something that I might not try otherwise. Um, so yeah, let me know what you think of those patterns down below. And I think that was everything I was going to talk about. So I've waffled on for half an hour, which is ridiculous. I'm now going to have a cup of tea, um, maybe catch up on some YouTube videos 
Um, if you have any other YouTubers you think I should check out as well, pop that in the comments as well, because I'm always looking for more. Or if you have a channel, please share it with me. Um, and yeah, uh, oh, I didn't say what I was wearing. I'm wearing a Brie shirt by Deer and Doe, which I have three of and I love. This was a brushed cotton from, I think, Fabrics Galore. Um, and it's a really comfy pattern I often wear at the weekends. And other than that, give the video a like if you enjoyed it. Uh, subscribe if you want to see more from me. Comment below so we can have a chat and enjoy the rest of your week. I was about to say Monday, but I don't think I'm going to post this on Monday. It'll probably be Tuesday. Um, enjoy the rest of your day, of your week. Take care and I will see you again soon. Bye guys.